In this lesson, we're taking a look at You Really Got Me by The Kinks. This is part of my Power Chord series, so you'll find more Power Chord based lessons in the description. The majority of this song just uses power chords rooted on the bottom string, so chords wise it is fairly simple. The challenge comes about in trying to nail the rhythm and keep up with the pace of the original track, but the parts are pretty similar the whole way through, so it's quite a good one to just pick up quickly and jam along with the whole thing. Before we get started, just a quick word on tuning because the original recording is slightly sharp. For example, the first chord is found somewhere in between F and F sharp. Now I've watched some footage of the Kinks playing it and they definitely play an F, so I've made sure that I'm gonna be teaching it the way that they play it. But it is worth noting that if you play along with the original recording, it might sound a little bit pitchy, which is fine just for the sake of practicing. But if it really bothers you, you could try tuning each string on your guitar up a tad or using a program like Logic or Audacity to correct the pitch. But but for now, let's dive in and see how it was actually played. So for the main riff of the song, we're starting with two power chords. We've got F power chord rooted on the first fret of the low E string, and G power chord rooted on the third fret of the low E string, and the order is going to be F, G, G, F, G. Then you leave a small pause, then same again, F, G, G, F, G. Now, rhythmically, uh, it simply follows the lyrics, you really got me, you really got me. So that makes it super simple to play and sing along. If you want the proper count though, we're pushing the first rhythm, so we're coming in on the and of beat four, and then we're just playing eighth notes. So it's gonna be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four but I think much easier to just get that you really got me lyrics rhythm in your head. With regards to technique, there are two points I want to make. The first one being that you wanna really keep the power chord shape nice and solid. So for example, as I'm moving from the F power chord up to the G power chord, I'm trying to make sure that my fingers don't all cave into each other. Otherwise, when I play the strings, I'm gonna get some pretty dodgy notes. So try and keep the power chord nice and stretched out so you're getting good quality notes on each string. And the other point I want to make is that when you're actually changing chords, be sure to relax the fingers and slide along the strings rather than lift the fingers off the strings and then have to find the power chord shape again. It's far, far more efficient just to relax the fingers, slide up, strum the next chord, relax, slide down, strum the next chord. But that's how you play the main riff of the song. Then pretty soon we enter the verse where we're just keeping that same F and G riff going round. <laughs> That repeats until a point where you can hear the general pitch of the song raise and you can also hear some backing vocals come in. This is where we start our power chord climb. So at this point in the song, we've just played the F and G. We're actually gonna stay on the G chord and play the exact same riff starting from the G. So instead of F and G, it's gonna be G and A power chords. So. Okay, so starting out the verse, F and G. Step up G and A, four times. So just the same riff, a tone higher. After the four times on the G and the A, we're gonna jump all the way up to C chord, which is on the eighth fret of the low E string. And we're gonna start playing the same riff again. So it's gonna be C and D this time. So eighth fret and 10th fret. Now at this point, because we've done quite a big jump up towards the top of the fretboard, the frets get a bit narrower, so you might have to adapt to that by bringing the fingers closer in together, but it's just a case of getting used to playing the power chords in different areas of the neck. And in this point of the song, it actually plays the C and the D part of the riff six times. And the structure is kind of a little bit subjective because there's not a definite end of verse and start of chorus. But the way I'm gonna describe it is that the first three times are gonna be the end of the verse and the last three times are gonna be the chorus because it just sings the, the title of the lyrics. Um, so in the verse ones, we're playing the riff exactly the same. So the C and the D, three times. Then when they start singing the You Really Got Me, we're gonna do the same riff another three times, but we're gonna keep the strumming going even in the gaps. So we're gonna have. After three rounds of that kind of chorus variation of the riff, we're just gonna hit the C power chord and let it sustain. 
That's going to ring out for two bars, and then at the end of the second bar, we're going to come back in with the verse riff on that pushed and of four. So to give you the chorus part, with the, uh, the gaps filled on the D chord, we're going to have... So stay in the C chord. One, two, three, four. Back into that second verse. So when you blend all of those sections together, that gives you the sort of main sequence of chords in the song, which makes up the majority of the structure, and it just kind of repeats round and round. I'm describing it as a climb because we start low down on the neck and gradually work our way up, and then it just starts again from the bottom. So I'm just going to give you another kind of quick guided tour of the whole thing just to make sure you've definitely got it. So we're starting with the main riff, which is the same as the start of the verse on the F and the G. Then move up to the G and the A. Four times. Up to the C and D. Three times normal. Then for more of the chorus section, add the extra strums in. Hit that C chord, let it sustain, then we're back down to the F and G. So hopefully you can get that down and the majority of the song is just made up of that climb. Now in terms of the overall song structure, we've started with the main riff, then we're gonna go through this verse and chorus climb twice. After the second chorus, we've got a guitar solo, and the rhythm for the guitar solo is just the main riff, so just the F and the G chords. Just that loop round and round. And you can use the G minor pentatonic scale to improvise over the top of this and try and come up with a solo of your own. I'm gonna be doing a lesson series on all the pentatonic patterns soon, so if you're unfamiliar with them, that will definitely help. Uh, you can also loop the, uh, the riff in a looper pedal and that'll help you practice it as well. Try and get the same fast paced thrashy feel to the solo that you hear in the original track. And it might also help to try and figure out some of the parts, like some of the licks that he plays that you like the sound of, so you can add them to your repertoire as well. I always think it's good for a player's development to try and pick out those things yourself. Uh, figure out how they're played and then add them into your own solos. He throws in a few strummy parts like this kind of thing which are good for adding a bit of energy to your lead playing. I've explained how to get started with that in my string mutant video so I'll pop a link to that in the video cards. And the only remaining part to talk about is the ending. So following that solo, we have one more time through the verse and chorus climb, but this time after we've played the chorus riff, the... We're gonna hold off going to that C chord and instead we're gonna stay on the D chord and we're just gonna do four down strums. And that's gonna be the end of our song. So the first three are all staccato strums. So as soon as I've done the strum, I'm gonna relax my fingers in my fretting hand. But then the final strum, we're gonna keep the pressure down and just let it ring out. And also, if you're comfortable with bar chords, you could play those last four strums as bar chords instead. Uh, you can kind of hear the top strings ringing out and especially the major third of the chord ringing out in the final uh, strum of the song. That would give it this sound. Just a little bit more harmony going on there, but if you're just purely using this song to practice power chords, then the power chord version works absolutely fine. And that gives you all the parts to You Really Got Me. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this classic tune. I've had lots of students enjoy learning this one over the years. As I mentioned, chords wise, it's fairly simple. The challenge is more keeping up with the speed and making sure your chords still sound good with the quick changes involved. Remember, you can play along to the original slow down on YouTube if that's helpful, just to make sure you've got the clarity as well. And the solo part is quite a good playground for experimenting with the minor pentatonic scale. So definitely have a go at a bit of improvising there as well. Be sure to subscribe for more guitar lessons and I'd really appreciate you giving the video a like if you found it helpful. Remember, there are more power chord based lessons in the playlist in the description, so hopefully I'll see you for another one soon.